so my great hope for what we do here is to create a model of engagement of planning for action that can be adapted across the different challenges that we face day by day for the last 25 years of my life i have the children who are coming into our our facilities who have to carry the weight of their parents who they see suffer through a lot of this the kind of corrosive impact of the st toxic stress that kids have to deal with when they're in families where people are struggling with health issues. Our kids are so resilient because they continue to go on. They go to school, they do the best that they can every single day um, and facing what their parents are dealing with and now here's COVID. Like those are all real things and they manifest themselves in ways that unfortunately, uh, many of our community leaders have to come up with patchwork solutions to. I don't see enough movement around what do we need to do for kids? Because they're becoming our future. And if we start working with them and ensuring that they understand the importance of healthy lifestyles, and that's one of our pillars at the Boys and Girls Clubs. I have had one experience where she said, well, we're very busy and we don't have time to do this for you. They can move fast and I guess they think you can move fast too. And, and it's just not the case. But most of the time, the people are very understanding and they'll go ahead and, and, and take their time and work with me very slowly. We talk about trust um, and I was in a community um, where I did not look like everyone else. So on occasions I felt as if I was just another number that was going there. And then as I began to understand both the systems and interaction of people, I realized that when I go to the doctor, I wear a suit. If I wear a suit to a doctor's appointment, I get a different level of respect from the nurses and from the other people as I walk in the room. As I was in the hospital for about nine days in the hospital, it wasn't until the fourth day, and I never told anybody I was a nurse of 25 years. First of all, I was too sick, and I didn't get that story out. But I was treated differently from those four days to the fifth day when they found out that I was a clinician, how many years and how much knowledge I knew that I was a nursing administrator for over 18 years, that I was an educator for over six, right? So then things started to change in my world. People started to come in, people started to talk to me. Um, look at me, examine me differently, and that is very powerful. There are times where I've traveled over an hour to see a physician because of that trust. Because, yes, they did, they said they might not have given me their phone number, but maybe they've given me their email. Trust has to be built based on performance, uh, consistency, empathy, listening to the patient, um, and not being so concerned about uh, making co-pays. And so trust, I think for me, has to be built on the consistency of a, a caring clinician who takes the time to listen and respond accordingly and um, treats his patient with respect. And if physicians have only a 15 minute window then we need to do a five minute assessment in the other 10 minutes. I need to know how you are. I need to know more about you. I need to take the time to educate you and make sure that you have received the education. You understand the education that I'm giving you and that you have the resources that matches up with your story. Trust with my clinician was, was really critical in my willingness to follow their instructions and to, uh, to work with them. Really take a moment to pay uh, attention to me and not just you know, give me my five minutes and, and send me out, out the door. So I wanna make a specific challenge to our medical professionals and educators as it relates to this conversation. Make sure that your professional associations and the schools in our state who educate our healthcare providers are intentionally building a cultural competence that allows them to see the humanity in the people they serve.